It is a Monday morning. Hope you had a good weekend. We've got a little weather to talk about. The LA thing is just unprecedented as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the, the amount of uh, acreage, the urban component to this, it's not a wildland fire. I mean, there's parts of it that have, you know, it's not, but it's not, this is an urban center that is being bombarded. This is very similar to what not very similar, but kind of reminds me of Coffee Park a little bit up in the North Bay, where it came out of the rural environment, the trees, the right, the foliage, the the kind of the burbs, and then blew right into a city. And that's kind of what we're seeing in, in, in um, Palisades it, it, to some extent. And so one of the things I want to talk about today is topography and, and why these fires get going. The other thing I want to talk about is California, right? Because if, if you know anything about the history of California, San Francisco burned down. I think five times before they started using brick. Uh, maybe not five, maybe four times, but it was five major fires, including the earthquake fire. Um, but fire is a, a huge part of this his, the history of the, 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 in, in the, the realities of living in California. You got, you got three of them. And this is always going to be the way it is unless the earth shifts off its axis. You have fire, you have earthquakes, and you have drought, and you could and earthquakes and tsunamis are kind of the same thing. But those things, that is, it's always been a part. And so when I mentioned this the other day, when you look at where they put the missions or the old, the ancient Indian tribes, look where they look where they are, man. Yeah, they go down the, the Chumash would go out to the coast, and they would forage and, and 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 do what they do. I'm not an expert on Indians, but they would go back to their villages well away from the coast or well away from mudslides or well away from right uh, uh, flooding you just don't and in recent years and when I was, I was at Berkeley and graduated in 1981 and I was a physical geography major was my undergraduate and so we talked a lot about you know the landscape of California and how over in those year in the 60s 70s and 80s which was I was a part of they were we were building more and more in the hills on ridge lines we we were building in floodplains which is my my professors were like these guys were old school Doug Powell and these guys they were old school going what are you doing you can't build in a floodplain you can't build in a coastal environment that has the potential for um, uh, you know high tide flooding places like sea drift and Cal you just they were just like stunned that people would would do this but we do and we did and here we are right here we are so we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about a little bit about venturi effect because that has a lot to do with what's happening in southern california and it has a lot to do with our fires quite frankly venturi effect is not a not a difficult phys physics com um, component or physics uh thing okay so this is the fires i just i i shouldn't say i love this imagery but i think this imagery tells a lot of the story you can see the smoke which way it's going you can see which way the smoke is going therefore you can see which way the fires are burning and you can see kind of you almost see a venturi effect see how it's funneled as it comes out of, off the land and then spreads out venturi slows down when it spreads out so the smoke i'm just using the smoke as trying to trying to make that example but again these fires in an urban zone this from the National Weather Service in Oxnard, National Weather Service homepage, which is a plethora of information. National Weather Service, there's not a meteorologist in the country that doesn't live and die by a lot of this stuff. There's private industry, weather models and things like that that are awesome. And, and there's even better meteorologists. And, uh, but the, in terms of just um, consolidating information, this is where you go. Um, National Weather Service, first place I checked, just for you know, for official records, things like that, and they do a nice job, and they're well educated. They're not, they're they're all meteorologists. Uh, so, <clears throat> this particularly dangerous situation in this fire zone, um, where we know where it is, that I haven't seen, I've never really seen a uh, um, proclamation particularly dangerous, which is kind of spooky, right? When you think about it, this is. Uh, the watches warnings and wind advisories and f fire weather warning. One of the things to pick up on right away is the smoke, not there. Remember the other day we, we looked at some shots earlier in this, but there's, this is right now. There's just not much smoke coming off those fires. So what they've done, number one, I know I'm not a firefighter, but I have a lot of friends who are. I guarantee you once they, they, I mean, they have containment on a lot of these fires. They've got the fires down to like, you know, 20 some percent in some places. Um, they're, they're hitting it hard with fire retardant in preparation for what's to come. And what is to come in the next couple of days are more wind events. 
25, 35, 45, maybe 70 mile an hour winds up in the hills should not be as aggressive as those 100 mile an hour winds. But now you've got hot spots everywhere. Oakland Hills fire back in the day. I remember the fire. There was a fire the night before, the day before. Pretty good fire in the hills. I think it was a house fire, actually. I can't remember that part. But they put it out and they stomped it out. They even kept crews there overnight, I believe. And, you know, doing what you do, stomping out a fire. But the wind event came up that next day, stirred it up, a spark got loose, boom, right? And that's kind of what we have coming up here. Not only do we have another wind event, but we have yet the driest, still the driest ever recorded uh, in, in South Los Angeles. The driest weather, the least rain. So it's like, I think LAX is 1% of rainfall average for right now. Marin County, parts of Marin County are almost 200%. That's why we're not where they are. Um, that's why we're not where they are. And we're very, very fortunate. That's just a lot of luck. That's just a lot of luck that we got all that rain. And they're just unlucky that they didn't have rain. So this is California, man. I mean, it's just uh, the facts. So here's Oxnard. I'm going over, I'm going to hover over. This is Meso West. The winds are blowing, gusting out of the east northeast at 30 miles an hour almost. You see these, see the barbs. So we have here Palmdale blowing northeast at 20, gusting to 28. So the winds are starting to pick up. This is all in the last hour. Here we got some wind up in Ontar Ontario, gusting to 24. And they're all kind of see that wind barb. It's pointing towards the south and towards the west. That's the general wind direction from these flows. And oh, by the way. The general topography of the mountains and the hills and the canyons of almost all of California kind of run in that direction. So these river basins, the Topanga Canyon, <clears throat> they grab the wind that comes up over the San Bernardino Mountains, what over the hills, <clears throat> and grab it as it's being forced down. It gets funneled into these canyons because it, if it was blowing out of the southwest, it wouldn't funnel. It would funnel to some extent, but you, the canyons don't real are not south let's say it was out of the southeast you're not going to see as much funneling because it's not hitting that slot directly so this is a venturi effect this I, I, I got from the la times they did a nice article on you know um the santa ana winds which by the way are just offshore winds or diablo winds what we would call them but you get the wind cooler air coming up over down getting forced down as it gets forced down it warms and when it warms it when you the reason it warms is because the all the, the air each parcel of air has a bunch of molecules in it they start rubbing together because they get compressed and they get closer when you put a bunch of stuff that's why space is so cold because there's no pressure when you get pressurized you start these molecules start interacting with each other and they heat up and you can feel it and that's one thing it heats up it dries up but it's also being compressed like a water like you you got your your garden hose you put your finger over it that flows was flowing pretty, but you put your finger over that garden hose, that's, that's the Venturi effect. And I thank you for the, I had a nice um, person write me the other day and go, that's a better, because I used an example of a squirt gun, which, eh, you're right, not that good. But the, the garden hose is awesome. So that's what's happening. And that's what's happening throughout the state of California. And so, again, combine epic drought in Southern California with topography, and then you get these winds, and it's, it's it's a mess. This is the the Venturi effect. In short, these are vectors. Let's say that's five miles an hour coming in over the hill, hits Topanga Canyon, which we're looking down on this. That in this case they the ve they're vectors, so they represent a, a velocity and a in a in a in a number and a value. And so let's say that's five miles an hour. Well, clearly that's four times more, so that's twenty miles an hour. And then it, when it opens up again. The flow, you take your finger off the um, hose and it opens up again and you go back to five miles an hour. So this squeezing of the winds is very, uh, is, is, is a lot of what's happening. And that's a lot of what happened in Palisades because Palisades, the, or the whole LA basin. Hey, listen, the LA thing, I've heard scenarios over the years since I've been in this business and it's very possible that LA Bay, if you get a fire starting up in Burbank and you have these same conditions, it can roll right through a city, through an urban center. And not to scare you, but these are these, this is the, the reality of, of, of topography, wind, and drought. I know, I know. Then this, and again, this is unprecedented. I'm watching this in real time, like you are, 
because again, the fires are really well contained right now. Air quality looks pretty good, by the way. Fires are really well contained right now. But when the winds blow tonight, there you can't get every hot spot. You just can't. And the last thing I'll say is when the wind blows and you got a fire, the firefighters will tell you they're not fighting it. They're getting people out of the way. They're trying to get people out of harm's way. They're trying to get themselves out of harm's way. And you're not fighting the fire. And so this whole thing about, oh, you know, they should have done, the firefighters weren't doing it. Pfft, are you kidding? I mean, at least I shouldn't say that. Maybe I, I don't, I, but in the whole of things, in the whole, I, there may have been examples of people were not happy and probably rightfully so. But in terms of a fire, trying to fight a fire, like it's just like trying to fight a tsunami, right? You just really, you're going to fight the tsunami, you're not. And that's California. So I just showed you the wind advisory up in the North Bay Hills. Uh, this is, we're back to us now. This is the um, uh, flood, coastal flood watch. Oh, hey, one second. I'm going to just check something. Sorry. Okay, good. I just, I just had a thought. I thought, God darn it. Maybe I forgot to record, which I've, I have done before. I've done before. I just did that. That's why I'm freaking out. Um, but it, I believe I'm recording. Okay, and there's that coastal flood advisory. That has to do with the high tides in the morning. This is San Francisco, um, Panhandle of the Park, um, out towards the sunset, Golden Gate Bridge, beautiful day. We are fortunate as heck that we've got over 100% of rainfall in the Bay Area. We got a lot of rain early. Imagine if we didn't. This, this story, this would be a very different story that I'd be telling right now, potentially, because there's so many opportunities when you don't have rain, when you have these dry winds, there's so many opportunities for fire starts. Okay, um, Mount Shasta, just beautiful. I love this because it's live. I mean, I, I just think that's stunning. And it's, it's such a beautiful camera. This is, um, what, what's the ranch called? Ham, Ham, Hampton? Gosh darn, Hammond, Hammond Ranch. It's like a, a, a little development up out of Mount Shasta City. And then there's Avalanche Gulch, there's Red Banks, there's Misery Hill, and there is the summit which I have never gotten to. I've gotten all the way up here, got chased down by a storm, gotten, been all over this thing, but never made the summit. Because I'm one of those guys, I'm super, because uh, I know about weather, I'm scared of it. <laughs> or not scared, but I'm respectful of it. And when you get up there and it starts to snow or lightning or thunder or get dark, you just want to get off, you just do. Um, okay, so this is a long range model. So we're looking for rain. And then uh, I put a circle around us. Here we go. You'll see an inside slider, kind of right. That's kind of an inside slider going out through Nevada. This is a better example right here. That's an inside slider. That could be, that could be a, something for Lake Tahoe. For us, it'll certainly be a cool down. But the other thing it is and can be and probably will facilitate will be an increase in the offshore winds in Southern California. And again, showing no rain there. I know. So it doesn't mean this is going to happen, but it's the models. It's pretty much where we were last night at this time. And then here comes around the 21st right here. And then that rain actually does sift through to Southern California. So we'll keep our eyes on it. Here's the rainfall accumulation. And just to show you that even though we go through this period to the end of the month, you do still see, see Point Conception and you see that it is dry. This is accumulation rainfall, and we're only looking at over an, an inch in the North Bay. So it's not even very much rain for us. I suspect this might be the beginning of more rain coming, but in this period, which is through the 29th of January, it keeps us pretty, pretty, pretty dry in Southern California, no rain. Here is Ocean Beach, San Francisco, five to eight feet. A lot of wind coming there. You can see the offshore wind blowing down from the hills and out into the ocean. You can see the stronger winds there. Tides are high in the morning when those high tides are creating that, uh, you know, issues, lucky driving places like that. So what I just say, this thing in LA is huge. Lots of it, it was huge to begin with. Now it's, to me, it's become huger because of the, or larger because of the um, forecast and the winds and the topography and the drought and the dry. And there's a lot of finger pointing going on down there too. And I, this is not the time for finger pointing. This is the time to kind of go, okay, and learn from things, learn from, our, learn from this. And again, fire, drought, <clears throat> and earthquakes. That's all enough said. And if we're not prepared for that, 
then we've got problems. And um, I was thinking about this the other day. I, I know like Newsom comes out and he'll say, uh, he'll say, oh, the drought's over, right? They, this is especially early in the year. It's like, oh, we got so much rain. It's all, even when we have a lot of rain, you got to be ready. You got, we got to live like we're in a constant drought in California. We just do because we will have flooding and we'll have too much water, too much rain, but we need to pretend and not pretend, we need to get better at water, resourcing our water, how we allocate water, how we use water. There's so many things that are, um, that, that uh, the state's gonna keep dishing it up, man, and just get, get used to it. You know? and, and if we don't, and if we don't make uh, um, adjustments in the way we live, then it's gonna, be a, it's gonna be a battle. It's gonna be a battle, and the state's gonna win. The climate's gonna win. All right, there you go. I hope that wasn't too down. I was, I'm trying, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm aware of what's happening in LA and it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And I just don't want to minimize it. And the next couple of days are going to be crucial. Northern California, not so much, but eventually we'll get there too. If we don't get rain, which the rain will come or should come around the middle and late, late part of January. I hope. See you back here.